So far we have graphed in slope intercept. We have taken standard form and turned it into slope intercept. We have graphed horizontal and vertical lines and now we're going to graph by identifying, identifying the x and y intercept of an equation. So we're not going to set it up in slope intercept. What we're going to do is we're going to find where it would cross the x and where it would cross the y. Now this is a good way to graph, but it has some limitations because sometimes the numbers are going to be fractions and we can't graph fractions on our grid. So that's why I like to have slope intercept uh, back there in case I need it. So we're going to graph these, finding the x and y intercept of each of these equations. So let's take a look at the first one that I have prepared for you. I have 3x plus 4y equal 12. This time, instead of setting it up in slope intercept, we're going to find the x intercept and the y intercept, and we can do it pretty easily. And the way I'm going to do it with you is I'm going to play a little game with you called cover, cover. If it's in standard form, which this is, if you want to find where it crosses the x, simply cover the y, or pretend like the y is 0. That says 3x equal 12. Okay, well, let me write that. 3x equal 12. Well, if 3x is equal to 12, when I divide by 3, x will be equal to 4. So in this equation, the line is going to cross on the x-axis at 4. So I can go ahead and put a point right there. All right? And now, let's, uh, let's solve for y. If you want to find where it crosses the y, either cover the x or pretend like it's 0 and say 4y equals 12. And if 4y is equal to 12, then when you divide by 4 on both sides, y will be equal to 3. So I'm going to go up the y, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I now have my two points based on uh, plotting on the x and y intercept, and I can draw my line. There we go. Now you think that's pretty easy, don't you? And it is. And as long as it works for you, that's perfectly okay to graph it that way. But you're going to see on some of my other ones that this isn't going to work and we have to have an alternative plan. But for now, it's good. All right, let's try another. Let's do our x plus y is equal to 1. Okay, here we go. x plus y is equal to 1. If you want to find the x-intercept, simply cover the y, and let's write the equation. x is equal to 1. Well, that's, that's finished. If you want to find the y, cover the x. y is equal to 1. I'm now going to go on the x and y intercept and put um, a point at each of those locations. x is 1, y is 1. So graphing on the x and y intercept, you're going to have a line that looks like that. Okay? And if that's a line that's going downhill. So we don't have to think about slope. We're just plotting on the x and y intercept. Okay, let's look at our next one. We have a negative 2x plus 6y equals 6. All right, we want to find out where it's going to cross the x. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cover the y. That says a negative 2x is equal to 6. Let me write that for you. Negative 2x is equal to 6. Now you know we have to divide to get down to a positive x. So I'm going to divide by negative 2. And x will be equal to a negative 3. So I'm going to go put a point at negative 3 on the x. And now let's solve for y. I'll cover the x. 6y equals 6. That's an easy one. And we'll divide by the number of y's we have, which is 6. So y is going to be equal to 6 over 6, 6 into 6 is 1. So I'm going to go up the y to 1. And 
we've just graphed that on the x and the y intercept. Okay, let's try another one. Negative 3x minus 9y equal 9. If you want to find the x, let's cover the y. Negative 3x is equal to 9. Let's divide by negative 3 on both sides to get a positive x. x is equal to a negative 3. So I'll go to negative 3 and make my point. And now let's see what y is going to be. Okay, when I cover x, we have a negative 9y. Negative 9y equal 9. We're going to have to divide both sides by the number of y's we have, which is a negative 9. So negative 9, negative 9. That makes a positive 1y and a negative 9 into a positive 9 is going to be a negative 1. So we're going to go down the y to a negative 1, which is right there. And let's graph that. There you go. Another one graphed on the x and y intercept. All right, let's go for this next one. 4x minus 2y. 4x minus 2y equal a negative 8. Same thing. You want to find x? Let's just cover the y. 4x equal negative 8. Let me write that so you can see it. 4x equal negative 8. And let's divide both sides by the number of x's we have which is 4. So x in this case is going to be equal to a negative 2. All right. Well, let me go over on the x to a negative 2 and put my point. And now let's find out what y is going to be. Okay, look at that sign right there. That's a negative 2y. So we have a negative 2y equal a negative 8. You know we're going to have to divide by negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2. Two negatives make a positive y. Negative into a negative makes a positive 4. So let's go up the y to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's graph it. I think you're liking graphing on the x and y intercept because you think it's a lot easier. It is easy, but you don't get to see the slope and but, but it's, a good, it's a good method. All right, now, the next set, some may be good to go, some may be not. So, I tell you what, even though we might be able to graph some of them, let's just say, I want to know where they cross the x, where they cross the y, but this time I really don't want to graph it, because I know some of them I can't graph anyway. But if I could graph, where would it land on the x or the y? Okay, here we go. So we're not going to graph it. We're just going to find out where it would cross on the x and the y. Here we go. 2x minus 4y equal 8. Well, if I want to see where it crosses on the x, 2x equal 8. Divide by 2. So x is going to be equal to 4. Okay, so right now it's going, x is going to be 4. Now let's find the y. Oh, negative 4y equal 8. Negative 4y equal 8. We'll divide by a negative 4. That ends up to be y equal a negative 2. Now I know that I could have graphed that, but I still want you to tell me where it would cross if it could, but we won't graph this one. It crosses x at 4, y to negative 2. That's good to know. All right. Now let's look at this next one. We have 3x minus 2y. 3x minus 2y equals 7. And here's the reason why we don't always graph on the intercept. Because we're going to end up with some fractions. And that's okay. Now let's find out where it crosses the x. I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing. I'm going to cover the y so I can solve for x. That says 3x equals 7. Okay, here we go. 3x equals 7. Well, you have to divide by the number of x's you have. So I'll divide by 3, and when I get finished, x is going to be some fraction, which is going to be 7 thirds. Now I know about where that is on the number line, but I can't, I can't plot it precisely. 
on the x. So I'll just say it crosses the x-intercept at 7 over 3. Let's see where we'll cross the y. Well, that looks like a negative 2 equals 7. Negative 2y equals 7. We have to divide by negative 2, so negative 2 on both sides. That's a positive y equal a negative 7 over 2. Remember that negative 1 negative can go on the top, it can go on the bottom, or it can go right in the middle, which says only one of them is negative. So the y-intercept would be a negative 7 over 2. Can't graph it, but I know where it would cross if I could graph it. Okay, let's look at our next one. We have x minus y is equal to 4. This one looks pretty easy. I'll cover the, well look, x is equal to 4. We already see that, don't we? So x-intercept is 4. And on the y, I've got, to, I better write that one so we can divide. A negative y is equal to 4. Let's divide by what? A 1, what kind of 1? A negative 1. Divide by a negative 1 on both sides. Negative into a negative is a positive y. Negative into a positive is a negative 4. This one, we could graph that, but since we're not, we'll just put y-intercept is going to be a negative 4. Okay, now that next one looks interesting. 4x plus 5y equal 13. Hmm. 4x plus 5y equal 13. Well, let's do the same thing we've been doing. Thank goodness we don't have to graph this. Okay, I'm going to hide the y, and I'm going to say 4x equals 13, and I'm going to divide both sides by 4. I now have x is equal to 13 over 4, and we can leave it just like that. So the x-intercept will be 13 over 4, and let's find out now what the y-intercept is going to be. That's a positive 5y, so I'm going to say 5y equal 13. We're going to divide both sides by 5, and that will give us a positive y equal 13 over 5, okay? So y is equal to 13 over 5. Can't graph it, but, if, but I know where it would go. Okay, let's look at... Now, those last two, I purposely did this to you. Everything I've done so far, whether we could graph it or not, I had it in standard form for you, so it would be very easy to cover one, then cover the other one. But these are not in standard form. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> y is equal to 2x minus 7. Now, that's in slope-intercept form. So how are we going to solve it? Well, if I hide the x, you'll see very clearly that y is a negative 7. But I have an idea. Before we ever begin, why don't we tell that 2x to get back over where he came from and put this thing back in standard form? And you know if he goes over here, then he's got to change his sign. So I'm going to put it in standard form before I begin so I can play my cover cover game. So 2x is going to move back where he came from, and he'll be a negative 2x. The y remains plus y equal negative 7. Now I'm back to something I know. I'm now going to cover the y. A negative 2x is equal to 7. Negative 2x is equal to 7. Divide by negative 2. Therefore, x is equal to a negative 7 over 2. And you see, we can do this one quickly. If I cover the x, you see that y is equal to a negative 7. So x is equal to a negative 7 over 2, and y is equal to a negative 7. Now let's try the other one that I've prepared for you just that way. If it's not in standard form, we can put it in standard form. y is equal to 4x minus 3. Now if we play cover, cover, yes, I can cover the x and I can get y. But you can't cover the y and get x because you can't solve for x when x and the number are on the same side. So I'm going to solve that issue by telling that 4x to get back where he came from. And when he moves back where he came from, he goes back to being what he used to be, which is a 
negative 4x, the y is a positive y, and the 3 is a negative 3. Now that we have it in standard form, I'm going to cover the y. I see that I have a negative 4x equal negative 3, negative 4x equal negative 3. Let's divide by negative 4. I always have to do that to get down to a positive x. And so x is. Now look at this. I can leave them both negative, but two negatives do make a positive. So either way, I'm just going to call it 3 fourths. Negative 3 over negative 4, 3 fourths, same thing. Okay, so x is 3 fourths. The x-intercept is 3 fourths. <clears throat> and on y, well, I see that pretty clearly. All I have to do here is cover the x, and I see that y is equal to a negative 3. So y is equal to a negative 3. So in this lesson, we've done two different things. We have learned to take an equation in standard form and graph it using finding the x and y intercept when it works. And then if it doesn't work, we can still play cover cover and find where it would cross the x or y, even though we don't want to graph it, at least we know what the answer would be. So I think we've done a good job on graphing or at least finding out where the x and y intercept would be if we cannot graph. Great, great job. Thank you.